British actor known for his role in a programme called Heartland, which I have no idea what it is. <laughs> you have no idea what it is either. No idea what channel it's on. No Netflix. It's on I know that. It's on Netflix. One point. Okay. So, um, well, this guy has sparked a debate after saying a gay guy should play a gay guy. Right. Well, Aidan Moreno said straight actors should step aside and let the LGBT plus community represent themselves. But is he right? Well, co-host of the bisexual brunch, Lewis Oakley, joins us in the studio and he thinks it's fine. It's OK for straight actors to play gay characters. Meanwhile, there's Benjamin Button with his glasses <laughs> steaming up and he says only gay actors should take on gay roles. But Benjamin... The thing is, they're actors. They act a role. Tell, tell us why you, you, you're so pro a gay guy playing a gay guy. Because I think it would be very naive to think that the only part of why a person gets a role is because of their ability to act. We know that they're, how much they appear in terms of a commercial value, how attractive they are, how much the audience is familiar with their name. Lots of things play a role in how they get roles. And the truth is that when it comes to gay stories being told, whether they're in films, dramas, that overwhelmingly, until very recently, they were played by heterosexual actors. And I think you have to ask yourself, why was that? It's because they didn't think that a gay star, a gay actor, would be commercially viable for a lot of these shows. And so I think that when you're telling stories of LGBT people's lives, gay, bisexual, transgender, etc., that they should be able to tell their own stories because it brings in authenticity and they often get fewer opportunities in other areas. Benjamin, does that not mean you're closing off the opportunity for them to play any straight roles in reverse? No, not really, because the truth is that, you know, there's no shortage of things that straight actors get, right? But basically, I'm saying that when it comes to telling stories about a niche experience of life, OK, so, you know, it's a lot easier to know what it's like to be heterosexual, me and the majority, because that is what most of our society is like. But when you have a niche experience of the world, whether that being black or disabled or gay, well, that's a lot better told by someone who understands that. And I think the truth is that if you look at TV shows like It's a Sin about the HIV AIDS epidemic, those gay actors brought a power to that that people who hadn't lived through it simply couldn't have. So, uh, Lewis, why is Benjamin talking rubbish? I just think over the years I have seen so many performances by straight actors that have played gay characters that have been really moving, that have, you know, that have really changed the dial and I think really helped destigmatize it a lot. I think actually there is something to be said for when a straight actor puts themselves on the line as it would have been seen once upon a time and plays a, a gay or LGBT role, that actually it brings a lot of attention to it. And I've actually always really enjoyed sort of the PR in the run up to those kind of films where the actors kind of talk about what they learn about the LGBT experience as they kind of did the discovery for the role. and what they brought to it. I don't think it's... I think it's great to be able to have LGBT actors play LGBT roles, but I don't think it's essential. And I think we need to be really careful because it was not so long ago when an agent would have said to their actor, don't do this. You, this, this will be bad for you. You'll be stigmatised. And now, in 2023, we're kind of saying to them, again, don't do it, um, because, you know, there will be a backlash from, you know, people that think that you shouldn't be having these roles, that you're stealing them. So we're, we're going to be back in that situation. But is there not a, an argument, Lewis, that, you know, you could actually say there was a need for it when fewer people were coming out and now it is much more socially acceptable to be gay and therefore there's no need for someone to act that role in the same way you wouldn't need a man to act as a woman like you used to in the days of Shakespeare? Well, I think a couple of points on that. Number one is if there is an audition process and if the argument is, well, an LGBT person is going to bring something uniquely to the role, then they'll get the role. If, you know, there's a straight actor that brings something different that the director likes, then maybe that's it. And I, I think also it's about saying that, you know, being gay or bisexual or LGBT is not the most defining person. What if the role is for someone that happens to be gay, but they work in a law firm and that's what the focus of the story is? Is it then better to have someone that had a law degree before they went into acting? It's being LGBT for some characters is not going to be the overarching thing that defines them. Do you think that's fair, Benjamin, that perhaps it's actually minimising the role to just being about sexual orientation? I mean, look, if the role is being behind the bar in a rover's return and 
the person's sexuality makes basically no reference, but they are theoretically a gay character. Sure, it doesn't matter. But what I'm talking about is these stories of people's lives that they can do a better job of. So take, for example, a program that aired on the BBC from America called Code. It was about black transgender people in the 1980s that produced the kind of music that people like RuPaul and Madonna's Oak, that culture came out of it. And they made a brilliant drama about it. And the actors who played that were black trans people, some of whom remembered that period of time. And it brought a power to that very sensitive story and a depth to it that just wouldn't have happened otherwise. And if it isn't the case that you shouldn't be a part of the group that you're trying to represent, that it, that it doesn't bring an authenticity, you wouldn't have a white bloke in Nelson Mandela. And actually, I think most people now would recognise someone sort of pretending to be in a wheelchair is a bit awkward as well. I think this is progress. What do you mean you wouldn't get a white guy playing Nelson Mandela? You get lots of black people playing white characters, and that seems to be OK. A bit of black actors playing Queen Elizabeth I. Anything goes. I think, I think most people would find it uh, comical, if not insulting, to see Eamon Holmes playing the role of Nelson Mandela, right? I don't think that's one job you you're going to You don't find that, that actress, that black actress who played Elizabeth I insulting? Uh, well, I mean, I haven't seen that particular program, so I don't know. I don't know exactly what you're talking about. Well, but the look, concept, uh, the concept that a black actress would play play a white historical character, and you're supposed to believe that. Well, hang on. I mean, there's been some stuff like the the Netflix drama uh, where people thought that there weren't black people around in the aristocracy and in in those parts of Britain at the time, and there were. So I think there's been some historical rewriting on some of those controversies where people saw black people in in historical dramas. But, I mean, there's this, uh, is it called being called colorblind uh, and whatever? So this goes on all the time. I mean, this is a nonsense. I watched Kenneth Branagh's film Belfast, which had uh, Indian corner shop owners and black school teachers and whatever. Believe me, the only black people you saw in Belfast in 1969 was either soldier or doctor, and that was it. But, you know, that was retro casting and it was being colorblind, and that's the way it is. So I find it quite strange that when all these things happen and they're accepted, and you seem to accept you know, that it's, that it's not good to have a white person play, play Manson Mandela, that you say only a gay guy can play a gay guy. But let me say this to you, OK? That there have obviously been heterosexual actors who have done good portrayals of, of gay stories. I, I think it's Matthew McConaughey in Dallas Buyers Club. Got Oscars Absolutely for exquisite, in my opinion. Yeah, but let me make this point. You know, Broke That Mountain, a film that, as a young teenage gay person, had a huge effect on me, and they were heterosexual actors, and they did a good job. There'd be no denying it. But you have to ask yourself, why is it that basically all of those major Hollywood gay stories, basically, every, so literally every single one until very recently, went to heterosexual actors? Is that not a problem that no gay people got to tell those stories? Okay, and the well, reason that it was only heterosexual, so it quickly, is because they wouldn't think a gay actor would sell. They wouldn't think it'd be commercial, and we have to break that down. Okay, Lewis, do you agree with that? Well, I, I think that one day we will get there where a gay actor will play a gay role and he'll get the Oscar. You know, that's something but to look forward to one day. The word but, an actor is an actor, basically. But, well. but he is an actor, and I think what we have to do here, I think there's two points, right? One is that we don't lose the public consensus on this, and the public consensus is, is it's acting silly. You know, anyone should be able to play a role. And then there, you do get into that argument of, well, should a gay guy be able to play a straight role? And it's very hard to defend against that without coming across hypocritical. But I also think we'll just, loop, you know, by siphoning off and saying, no, only certain people can play these roles, we'll just lose some talent there. Okay, There's no need for it. Let's put it to a vote as we end this. Uh, is it OK for straight actors to play gay? I say yes, Isabel. Yes. Yes. Liz. And Benjamin? No. Three to no. one, you're beaten. Three to one. <laughs> Three to one. Thanks Thank for taking very part much. anyway. Um, very good yeah, to talk to both you. of you. Thank you very we much indeed. We had a fascinating indeed. interview with